Tonight's top EU stories from the UNIT website include Japan to discuss EU free trade agreement The EU Commission at war with Mercedes-Benz More foreign students calls the European Union France says slow down with EU and USA trade agreements Plus, economist Professor Tim Congdon writes about the crises in Cyprus I'm Rick Timmis and this is the UNIT Nightly News. First, from our homepage, the evidence against the case that the UK must maintain EU membership to retain the trading relationship is mounting. In this article, we see that now Japan is to begin discussion with EU czars and is looking to negotiate a free trade agreement, in the same manner as several African nations, Peru and, of course, the USA. So given that this trading relationship is clearly a cartload of BS, then what exactly is our EU membership paying for? The EU commissars are getting hot under the collar over recent allegations that Mercedes cars are using illegal coolant in their air conditioning units. How infuriating. I mean, imagine, there you are with a carpet bag full of Cypriot cash, sweating and panting after having outrun an angry mob of sobbing depositors, and thinking, how can I put this new E-Class onto my MEP allowance? Suddenly you realise that your own evil legal wranglings are working against you and your orc scribes have just legislated your beautiful E-Class off the road because the air conditioner coolant is the wrong type. It's a stressful and difficult life working as a kleptocrat in the dark towers of Strasbourg. The European Commission wants to speed up the visa process for foreign students and allow them to work in the 27-nation bloc. Well, they'll have no luck getting that policy to function with the UK border agency. As regular viewers of the nightly news will note, I reported only yesterday that the border agency had a backlog of 92,000 immigration applications and was anticipating being kept busy until 2037. I suspect many of our aspiring EU student applications will be ready just in time for their retirement. If anyone thought working out a free trade agreement between the United States and the European Union was going to be easy, France has a message. Slow down. Well, actually, Monsieur Hollande, no, we here at the unit didn't think a free trade agreement with the USA was going to be easy. Particularly as the main trade export from the USA is genetically modified wheat and corn, which none of the consumers in Europe want. Furthermore, whilst big agri-pharma companies have bribed, sorry, I mean lobbied, the US Congress to deregulate the use of Sonmanto frankenseeds, the EU kleptocrats are none too jolly about the deal. How about trading broken submarines for breech-jamming semi-automatic rifles? I know the Greeks have a batch of faulty subs they could do a good price on. We have a letter in from Professor Tim Congdon in which he dissects the financial situation with Cyprus. Indeed, as Professor Congdon points out, some of us did warn, even then, that the architects of the single currency had neglected such important topics as deposit insurance and lender of last resort arrangements. In his letter, Tim goes on to support his arguments in his usual meticulous manner with detailed evidence. Of course, where this article gets really interesting is in the economic predictions that Professor Condon makes. Today in our video library, our webmaster Andrew Fear sent me a link to this very moving video from Cyprus on the day the banks reopened. It seems that the greatest majority of the people of Europe are firmly against the action taken by the EU kleptocrats, and yet Cypriot protests are ignored and the rest of us appear powerless to act on their behalf. Perhaps this then is exactly the example that shows the EU to be an undemocratic, totalitarian tyranny. However, I'm not one for prediction, but here is a tip that I have on excellent authority. Of course, only time will tell if I'm actually right. The next country that will suffer a depositor's levy because their banks have imploded will be... 
wait for it, the Republic of Ireland. That's right, Ireland. If you or your or family have money on deposit in either a savings or checking account in Ireland, particularly AIB, then it's time to begin making the transfers. You don't want to end up in the same situation as this poor man in Cyprus. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for the Unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon. You can get lots more news stories and information on our website, theunit.com. You can get in touch with us there, and we particularly welcome your letters and points of view. You can follow us on Twitter. Our Twitter username is the E Unit. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel for all of our regular updates. You can join me and the rest of the team for interactive discussion and debate on Google Plus at any time. Are you looking for a public speaker for your event? Our public speakers are happy to come and discuss Britain's relationship with the EU in your area at no cost. If you would like to add interest and value to your group event, then get in touch with us via the Word section of our website. Join us in our live Question Time style online show, The Unit Interactive, broadcast live on our website, theunit.com, and globally via thehangoutshow.com. Join our community on Google+, and you can be part of the wider public voice, united in freedom, liberty, and independence. Simply join our community, the unit on Google+, links to the community page are below. <laughs>